Hello, welcome to this video on uh, examples on waves. Well, I will try to show you some examples of electromagnetic waves that satisfy uh, Maxwell's equations. Um, and uh, in your advanced studies of these waves, uh, you will know all type of things about their properties, their velocity, uh, their uh, phase constants, uh, how they behave inside different media, how they reflect from surfaces and so on. And again, as I mentioned in class, it's really Maxwell's equations are the foundation of all of this, and all these waves do satisfy Maxwell's equations. So I'm going to try to solve a couple of examples here in this video, and, uh, but again, in your advanced studies, you will know more about the subject of electromagnetic waves. Okay, we see here that we have this, um, this field, this magnetic field here. This is the magnetic field H of T. And uh, it is given by this expression. Uh, we have uh, h of t as 4 cosine 10 to the power 7 by t minus kilo y plus by over 4 az microampere per meter. So, as I explained in class, this is an electromagnetic wave. It's traveling in the y direction because this negative sign here is traveling in the y direction. And the magnetic field has a component in the z direction. Okay? Uh, it's omega, this is omega here, it's 10 to the power 7 pi, uh, radian per second, and it has this phase shift to pi over 4 uh, in the expression. What are you asking us for? If this is a magnetic field as a function of time, find the electric field as a function of time, and then find k naught. Uh, and they are giving here a hint that uh, you use a second curl equation to find k naught. So, for this equation to satisfy, or this field to satisfy Maxwell's equations, we should be able to get the electric, the electric field from one of the two Maxwell's equations. Okay? So we have to use one of the two curl equations to solve for, a, for E. After we have done so, we can use the other curl equation to solve for Knut. Now, first I would like to, to, to show you what does this wave represent. What does it represent? Uh, if you fix T, you freeze time. Okay, fix T, you freeze time, so this is a constant, and then you freeze Y. When you freeze Y, you are talking about a constant plane. Okay, if you try to plot the field in this constant plane, it will be a constant, because this is now a constant, this is a constant, this is a constant. So everywhere along that plane, the field will simply have a constant value. T is fixed because we froze time, and Y is fixed because we picked one plane only. So... Such a, such a wave is called a uniform plane wave. So let me show you how does this look like in the next slide. So, as I said, I, I, I freeze time here. I'm freezing time. So I'm just taking a snapshot. And I'm focusing on one plane. So this plane here, plane Y equal to Y naught. So this is a plane Y equal to Y naught. The magnetic field, as you could see, it is the same everywhere on this plane. And it's pointing in the Z direction. Okay? And uh, the wave itself is traveling in the y direction, as I said. So the field, the magnetic field is z direction, but traveling in the y direction. And because this is called a, a uniform plane wave, uh, the field is the same everywhere along that plane. And actually, any other plane you're going to pick, as long as it's, it's, uh, it's a constant y plane. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to jump ahead of time here, and I'm showing also the electric field. We're going to solve for that in a second. The electric field is going to be in the minus x direction, and it's also constant on the plane. And as you can see, if you take the cross product between E and H, so if, the, if you rotate from the red to the black, you will get the direction of wave propagation. And this one property of these electromagnetic waves. Okay, I will use the first curl equation. Curl H is equal to J plus partial D partial T to solve for um, the electric field. Uh, I know H, I can get its curl, and then I can integrate the, in time to get E. Notice that they did not tell us anything about a current. Then J, the, the embraced current, the source that we may have is equal to zero. This is not the case if you have an antenna. Okay, If you have an antenna, you have a, a, an impressed current, an excitation current. One other thing, this J it has two components, impressed part and sigma E. Because sigma E is also a current density. But no one here said anything about conductivity, so we assume we are in free space. So conductivity is zero. So here curl H 
is equal to partial d partial t and d is equal to epsilon naught e and so this means that I can divide both sides by epsilon naught to get this equation now it, we expand the curl this is the determinant of the curl remember that h has only hz and hz is a function of y so here it has only a z component this is why the other two are zeros if you expand that you see if you cancel this column this row this is the only non-zero component you're going to be getting it's partial hz partial y okay and it's going to be in the x direction so this means that this is x we are now going to differentiate hz remember hz was a cosine 10 to the 7 by t minus connote y so you differ differentiate a cosine you get minus sine and then you differentiate minus key not y which is the angle you get another minus sign so you get minus key not minus minus here and the amplitude is 4 micron okay so I remember the derivative of cosine is minus sine but the angle is going to give you another minus key note here so this is the expression for the electric field and uh, once you um, organize it you integrate it relative to time to get the electric field and remember when you integrate uh, the the constant of the integration is zero as I said in, as I mentioned in class because this constant will represent a static electric field and the static electric fields do not travel okay so we reorganize everything here um, and this now is the expression of the electric field the derivative of the electric field okay uh, this is the uh, 10 to the minus 6 that we have here what you have next is to simply integrate relative to time so the integration of the sine is going to give us minus cosine and because you are integrating relative to time you have to divide by 10 to the 7 pi uh, so uh, you have this uh, I think I'm missing a pi here maybe I should write this one here just a second so this is 10 to the 7 pi okay and uh, we have everything else that we need okay so and this is this is the expression for the electric field that you have okay e of t as a function of time now we use the second curl equation to solve for k note the second curl equation is curl e is equal to minus partial b partial t so and uh, b is nothing but mu note h so we take mu note out from the differentiation because it's a constant uh, h is given so we can differentiate h h is 4 cosine 10 to the 7 by t minus key note by plus by over 4 the derivative of the cosine will give us minus sine okay so negative negative this term becomes positive and the derivative of 10 to the 7 uh, if we, uh, uh, it was cosine 10 to the 7 by t so you differentiate it becomes t sine 10 to the 7 by t and then the derivative of the angle will give you 10 to the 7 pi here okay on the left hand side you have the curl of e E has only an x component as you could see here this is in the x direction so this is e x we have to differentiate this one relative to x you have to be careful here because you have a negative sign okay x is a function of y so the only non-zero component will come when you cancel this row and this column and it's gonna be this minus this so minus partial e x partial y so it's another negative sign coming from here and when you differentiate the cosine, you get another negative sign because it's, it's the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. And then you differentiate the angle, you get minus keynote. So you have here four negatives. So these four negatives are going to make the left-hand side positive as well. Okay, you have to be careful with that, okay? So one negative sign will come from the E electric field itself. One negative sign will come from minus partial E x partial y. The third negative sign will come from the derivative of the cosine is minus sine. And the fourth negative sign will come from the derivative of the angle. Because the derivative of minus q naught y is minus q naught. Okay, we, we differentiated the, 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 the electric field. The derivative of the cosine again gave us minus sine. I cancelled all the negatives here. They are all gone. And I did not really want to write the angle again. Sine 10 to the 7 by t minus q naught y plus y over 4. So I kept it as a bracket like this because it's the same here. Both components are in the z direction. So even I can eliminate az. Now we'll do some simple elimination. 4 will cancel with 4. Okay. Um, and uh, the sine will cancel with the sine. Az, I don't have to talk about direction because they are both in the z direction. So what you're going to be end up ending up with, k naught squared here. If I multiply 10 to the 7 by, by 10 to the 7 by, I get 10 to the 7 by squared. 
this epsilon naught will multiply mu naught to get this term. So k naught will be equal to if you take the square root of k naught. This is k naught squared. It's ten to the seven pi uh, square root mu naught epsilon naught. And this this formula is very well known in um, in high frequency. Uh, if you have an an, an electromagnetic uh, plane wave, uniform plane wave traveling, then the this this term here, which is called the fa the phase constant in direction of propagation, is related to the frequency omega, which is here ten to the seven by radian per second, and square root mu naught epsilon naught. One over the square root mu naught epsilon naught is actually the velocity of the electromagnetic wave, and it's huge. It three tenths of power eight meter per second in free space. Okay, so uh, so omega, the angular frequency, which is multiplying time, and k naught, which is multiplying y, y the direction of wave propagation. They are not independent of one another. They are related to one another through this formula here. And the constant, this one over v, and v is the velocity of propagation, is really the constant of proportionality between them. Okay, we move to discuss another example. We have here an electromagnetic wave. Uh, we're, giving, we're giving E, the electric field is given to us here. Uh, it's cosine 10 to the power 9 T minus 2 Z in the X direction. So E is in the X direction. It's the wave is traveling in the Z direction, positive Z, because it's negative sign here between T and Z. But something is different about this wave because it's multiplying 100 E to the minus 0.202 Z. So the wave is traveling in the z direction, but you have this term, which makes the wave weaker and weaker as travels in the z direction. So you can see, as z increases, this negative exponent is going to decrease. So this is called a, a decaying traveling wave. It does travel; it's traveling from one point to another in space, but as as it travels, it decays. Uh, so the asking is here to find the corresponding magnetic field and find the phasor of the electric field. So, let's see how we're going to do that. We're going to, of course, have to go back to Maxwell's equations and uh, put this electric field. And Maxwell's equation will tell us what would be the magnetic field traveling with this electric field. Because they travel together when you have an electromagnetic wave. Before I move and show you the, uh, the, the magnetic field, I just want to show you what is the meaning of this. This, this one here, this is the electromagnetic wave. I just took a snapshot. This is the direction of wave propagation, so this direction here is the direction of Z, okay? Um, in free space, in air, the wave is traveling, so in the next time step, the wave, this is how the wave is going to look like. If you, if you allow time to pass a little bit, this is how the wave is going to look like, okay? It's shifting in the Z direction, it's traveling in the Z direction, okay? But as it enters into that medium, this is a lossy medium, the wave amplitude is going down. It's decaying by e to the minus that negative exponent that we have, e to the minus alpha z. It's decaying. Okay? So even though the wave is traveling, but once it enters that medium, it starts to decay until it loses all its energy. And by the way, this is how electromagnetic waves behave in lossy media. Uh, most material around us, they have some sigma. If the sigma is, is zero, then there are no losses. Usually there is some sigma, even our bodies, because our bodies are made of, uh, they have high water content, and water um, has significant conductivity. So electromagnetic wave as travel through our bodies, they experience this phenomenon, they decay. And where do the, where do the energy go? It's converted into heat. So uh, so it's, this heat is negligible, of course, because the electromagnetic waves around us, they have negligible small energy. But, uh, but, but this heat can be significant if you have a very strong field and so on. So, in this part of air, it's just a cosine omega t minus beta z. It's the regular traveling wave. But once the wave enters into the lossy medium, which is the one to the right, it starts to decay. Okay? Uh, so this is a very well-known phenomenon that you're going to hear about more, again, advanced courses. Now we move to calculate the magnetic field. I wrote for you here the expression for the electric field just to remind you. Um, so we're going to use this curl equation. We're going dif to differentiate the electric field relative to space. And then we integrate the magnetic field in time. So if this, is, uh, this curl is minus partial b partial t, you take mu out because you assume mu is a constant. 
uh, and then you solve for uh, partial H partial T. Um, so the curl of E, you write it here. Remember the electric field has only an X component, and this X component is a function of Z. Okay, it's a function of Z and time, but here we're only differentiating relative to space. So the only non-zero component you're going to be getting when you cancel this, co this column and this row is going to be this minus this. So you have negative here coming from the AY, and you have negative partial E X partial Z. So this, this is the expression for the derivative of the magnetic field. Now, when you differentiate the electric field relative to Z, you have to notice that you have two terms. This term is a function of Z, and it's going to give you minus 0.02 multiplying 100 into the minus 0.02 Z, and this is what you have here. 0.02 multiplying 100 is going to give you 2, and the negative with the negative that we have here, okay, is going to give you a positive. Remember, this negative will cancel with this negative, okay? This negative will cancel with this negative here. Now, let's differentiate the cosine. The derivative of the cosine is minus sine, so you get this negative sine here and this sine. And the derivative of the angle relative to z is going to give you minus 2. So you get minus 2 multiplying 100, you get minus 200. Okay? So remember, all this field is in the uh, y direction. Okay? This, this is the field in the y direction. It just ha it, it has a, a cosine component and a sine component. Okay, so this, this really means that the, the magnetic field is not actually a cosine. It is a sum of a cosine and a sine. And as you know that, when you sum a cosine and a sine, you still get a cosine that is phase shifted. So this, is, this, is a, this, this tells you that the magnetic field will not be exactly in phase with the uh, electric field. The electric field is cosine 10 to the power 90 minus 2z. But the magnetic field will be exactly that same expression. But this, this the, for the magnetic field, be 10 to the power 90 minus 2z plus some phi. And this phi can be small or large depending on the losses. So I reorganize things here in, in, in this slide here. I put all the terms together. Um, and uh, I integrated what I did in this slide as well. I integrated relative to time. So I integrated the, this was a cos, this was a cosine. The integration of the cosine is a sine, and then you divide by ten to the power nine. Uh, this was a sine. The integration of a sine is minus cosine, and you divide by ten to the power nine. The negative that you got from here was cancelled with the negative here. So both of them becomes positive. Now become positive. So if you take a look at this expression, uh, this is two ten to the power nine mu. This is two hundred over ten to the power nine mu. So this expression is way stronger than this expression, okay? So even though you have a cosine and a sine, and the net result will be a cosine that's slightly shifted, but this cosine here is way higher in amplitude. It's 100 times actually higher in amplitude so that I can neglect this part, and they say the magnetic field is given by this expression approximately, okay? Now, to write the phase of the electric field is not that hard. Um, if this is the electric field, remember e to the minus two, z, e to the minus point to O two z is simply a constant. Uh, so this cosine is going to be written e to the j, ten to the power nine t, e to the minus j two z. Take the omega t out, then you end up by e to the minus j two z. Okay. So the, the only trick here is that to remember that this is a, a real exponent, so it's treated as a real number. It is not really affect the phase it affects only the amplitude of the phasor but not the phase of the phasor the phase of the phasor here is minus 2z as you could see here and this is the electric field in the x direction 